thanks for meeting me in the boardroom. I, I hope you guys have liked what we put down. Fried chicken and watermelon. Hope everybody appreciates that. So let's get right into business. I have a brilliant idea for a movie. I'm really excited to share it with you. Yeah, no problem, Jeremy. What's your big pitch this week? We're really excited to hear what you got to say. Let's make a movie where a white guy, get this, plays a stereotypical angry black woman. Good idea, all right? Um, you do know that's racist, right? What do you mean that's racist? No, 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 see, get this. There's a message involved. Everybody should always be their selves. So it's still a good idea, right? Then why do you have a white guy playing a black woman? That has nothing to do with the message you're talking about. It's funny. We've never seen anything like it before, so it's comedy gold. Um, yeah, we've seen things like it before. It's called blackface. Blackface? No, 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 no. I can't believe you would even suggest something like that. See, get this. The white man doesn't dress like a black woman. He only talks like her. Look, Jeremy, we like you. You're a nice guy. But we gave you your last movie, which was demeaning to women. It didn't do well. We've tolerated your YouTube skits, which were offensive to everybody. I, I can't even believe you're this angry at my movie idea. It's brilliant. I, I don't think I don't think we're on board with this movie. You know what? Forget it. You don't understand the humor. You don't get the message. So you know what? I'll be the writer of the film. I'll direct it. I'll star in it. I've already got the voice for Loquisha down. Loquisha? Are you out of your mind? Yes, Loquisha is her name, obviously. What? Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to Everyday Nerd. I'm your host, Zach Steiner. Taste feels about Friday. Happy Friday. If you're new around here, on Fridays, we tackle systematic racism, apparently. That's what we're doing now. Systematic racism in movies. So every once in a while I'm on YouTube, I'm looking at some indie movie trailers, trying to see what's gonna come out in the upcoming year. And uh, sometimes I get just recommendations, just regular recommendations of new movies. And the other day I got a recommendation for Loquisha by this man named Jeremy Seville. And uh, <laughs> I watched the trailer, I knew it was gonna be bad. It said it was coming out in July. I was like, all right, cool. When it comes out in July, I think this will be a good type of movie to do a video on. And then uh, because of the backlash for this trailer, because of course he got backlash for it, um, he decided to go ahead and release it early. So it's the end of May and we've already got a movie that's not supposed to come out until July. And I watched it with some friends of mine and oh boy, is this movie just utter garbage. Let's take a look. That's who needs their own show. If I was a black woman, I'd be perfect. Stop, She's brilliant. I know. Get her in here. The quick gonna be the biggest thing in radio, but I still need my anonymity. If you've never heard anything about it, Loquisha is a 2019 movie directed, written by, and featuring Jeremy Seville, a comedian who thought that this was a good idea. The whole premise of the movie is that Joe is really good at giving advice, so much so that he auditions for his own radio show. After he's denied, he's randomly watching a show on TV and has the genius idea of, well, if I was a black woman, I could then have my own radio show. So he creates the persona Loquisha, a loud, tough love, advice giving, stereotypical black woman. He gets the show, hijinks ensues. And right off the bat, we see the main issue with the film. It's racist. <laughs> Jeremy Seville does such a fantastic job of portraying an older white man talking like a stereotypical black woman. You love Loquisha. Hey, Loquisha. My name's Ted. Ted Ramos, dead. You sound dead inside. It's, it's great, really. Oscar worthy, even. I think what's so fascinating about this movie is I don't even really need to spell out why it's not good, why it's racist. You can pretty much understand that from the trailer but then if you watch the movie like it just gets worse and worse not only do you have people in the movie championing this dude for being loquisha there's a bit where he talks like an indian guy and it's a really bad accent you know curry madras lentil dal you name it Martha, you've been fasting again, haven't you? He, he has a black friend that's cool with it. He has a black love interest who's cool with it. Rachel, his love interest, even calls him out on his BS at the end of the movie. 
and then he just sleeps with her immediately after, like in the matter of seconds. You know, I didn't care that you pretended to be somebody else. I know who you are. And I... I love you. That's what I was going to say. And I'm just like, wh why was this movie made? You even have people like Marlon Wayans who created White Chicks, something similar, calling this dude out for his bullshit. Because what Jeremy does is create a character meant to be laughed at. It's not funny though. And there's no real message here. So you just get an inherently bad film. Then we have this part in the movie where he talks to another white guy, but this guy is like racist. And so he's talking as Loquisha, trying to give this racist guy advice but it's like why his show gets so popular that they start auditioning for somebody to play the part as loquisha and so we get this montage that's not funny it takes way too much time but they finally find the right woman for the part and she ends up going evil by the end of the movie because she's pissed that he's charading around as a black woman i mean it makes sense but then he's seen as a victim, which is hilarious, of course. But I think the, the part of the movie where I was kind of like, okay, this might work if they do this right, is they play this almost insanity angle with Jeremy because he starts talking in the Loquisha voice outside of the, the radio booth. And I mean, it's to the point where he's having a conversation with a cop and he just lets his voice out and he starts talking into himself. Will you shut up? Excuse me? I apologize, officer. I don't know what I'm saying. Yes, I was at a friend's house. I had one drink. That's it. And they was making out. Who was making out? I'm confused. The, the audio is also bad in that scene. But the craziest thing that they do in this movie is there's this girl who's green screened at like a bridge, like she's about to kill herself. And he uses the voice to talk her out of killing herself. And this is just the point in the movie where we're supposed to be rooting for Joe as Loque Loquisha because He's done this, he's done everything good. He's using his talents for good. But we all know that that is complete and utter bullshit. But if you thought that was all I had to say about Loquisha, you ain't ready. The camera work in this movie is abysmal. <laughs> we have moments where the camera is moving into a shot and then it just completely cuts into a different shot for no reason. There are multiple scenes where the editor moved the camera in post it's so distracting not only that but all the shots are like stupid simple you know it's like a shot a reverse shot another shot a reverse shot what's that another shot reverse shot it's boring it's not interesting and that's just like the tip of the iceberg with the technical aspects because if you thought the subject was bad if you thought the material in the movie was bad the acting and the writing and the directing like all that's bad but the technical aspects it's just mind blowing that this was greenlit. The soundtrack is filled with this like 90s sitcom, weird ass uppity music for no reason. There's, there's a scene where Joe is giving his wife some money for his kid to go to a private school and listen to the music in this scene. Where did you get this? I stole it. Really? Where did you get this, Joe? I got another job. Doing what? Consulting work. What kind of consulting work? People ask me what I think and I tell them. Are you doing this for a company? Yeah. I, I don't think you need me to tell you what's wrong with that. Uh, the composer for this movie is a man by the name of Brian Salter, who also, this is his only other musical credit on IMDb, he did the music for Mario's Game Gallery, which is a children's Mario game with board games for DOS. And uh, I'm under the impression that he just took that music from that game and put it in this movie. But my favorite part in the movie, by far, is this scene right here. Wanted to see you're working so hard, Joe. I got a smartphone. But you said you hated smartphones. I was wrong. All right, be honest with yourself. How many times did you rewind that scene? How many times did you think YouTube messed up and it glitched out? Let's play it again. Wanted to see you're working so hard, Joe. I got a smartphone. But you said you hated smartphones. I was wrong. That's right, it's the movie. It's, it's not YouTube. My theory is 
they originally said iPhones and they realized, oh, we can't say iPhone because it's some kind of like product placement thing or something. So they dubbed Jeremy saying smart in for both characters and it just sounds so bad. I got a smartphone. But you said you hated smartphones. I was wrong. And so the entire time I was watching this movie with friends, we would constantly have to like rewind a few seconds, rewind 10 seconds, rewind a minute, just to make sure that what we saw happen actually happened. But then you get to the very end of the movie and this is what's probably the saddest thing. Jeremy Seville dedicated this movie to his mom and dad. That's sad. As I was looking into this Jeremy Seville character, I realized that he also did another movie called The Test where he's demeaning to women. And then I also found out, get this, he's a YouTuber. He's been doing YouTube videos for the last 12 years. His comedy derives from this offensive angle. And I don't want to be a comedy please. I'm not. I love some very dark comedy, but it's got to be funny. And that's the problem with his comedy on YouTube. That's the problem with Loquisha. That's the problem with Jeremy Seville and these types of comedians. Anything can be turned into something funny. Anything can be comedy. You just have to do it in the right way. If it's in the right hands, it can be thought provoking and funny. If it's in Jeremy Seville's hands, it's neither of those. Anyways, I'm going to go try to repress my memories for seeing this movie. Hopefully I'll never have to think about it again. And uh, yeah, I just am mind blown that this is on Amazon. It's Amazon Prime. If you have Amazon Prime, you can go watch it right now. Give it like a one star review. One star it on IMDb, do something. Cause boy, I never want to see this man make another movie in his life. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. Today's episode of Your Everyday Nerd is brought to you by Skillshare. Learning skills on your own is difficult, but with Skillshare, things could be a whole lot easier. If you're like me, you like learning new skills and improving on your current skills. Whether that's video editing, script writing, or music production, Skillshare has hundreds of online classes taught by professionals that you can take right now for less than $10 a month. Not only is this the most affordable way to increase your skills, but you can get an additional two months for free if you check out the link in the description box below. If you do decide to sign up, you'll be supporting your everyday nerd. But anyways, that's all the time we have for today. If you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you're using it, like, hit that dislike button. Let me know down in the comments. What are your thoughts on Loquisha? Hopefully nobody's seen it. If you like the episode, go ahead and subscribe for more Your Everyday Nerd. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.